Hello everyone, the cake and potato cowgirls are back cooking for you and look what we brought. We have matching aprons from Wyoming from the little quilt store in Lander. Uh, the owner is from California, we talked a lot because we are looking for uh, real estate in Wyoming and Lander is one of the contenders. And we got uh, matching aprons and pot holders. They cute with horses. Yeah. And um, I brought you something too. Uh, I'm a, uh, I don't know, I like uh, nice uh, kitchen towels. <laughs> it's one of my, <laughs> my quirks. Um, I brought you here one from Laramie that you can look at it. See that? And I brought you one from Utah with a bee because uh, the beehive is the symbol of the. Uh, Mormon Church and a, a real special one I want to I want to show you look at this I have one from California one from America see that this is handmade um, if you look on the side see, it's hand stitched all that is uh, made and this was also in in the in the temple square I got that in in Salt Lake City but one for California, one for America. I really love those, and they were like um, they were like in these packets. Look, this it's also stitched like these neat little boxes here. Isn't that cute? So you can actually keep them nice. Well, what are we doing today? Let's go to the cooking. Today we are making for you a vegan. Moussaka, but not like the Xenos make it. We make it like the Greek. I have a Greek recipe for you from a Greek friend of mine in Germany. And of course there's a story with it. <laughs> um, when my daughter was Eddie's age, Eddie is my granddaughter, <clears throat> maybe a little younger, maybe one, two years younger actually, when she was in elementary school, I moved uh, from a little, little town off the Schwang with five people living there, uh, to the middle of Sonthofen, the, the city of the, um, the capital of the area, Algoi, so to say. And because uh, I was really lonely after divorce, after 18 years marriage and then divorce, I was up in the mountains. But they have the, you might not you know, off the Schwang, they have the female Super G and downhills from there. And it was beautiful. It was fantastic. I worked from home for Power Bar, <laughs> the Berkeley company, and uh, it was it was really nice. But I was very lonely there because during winter it was hard to get up there. It was uh, lots of snow, kind of like Wyoming. You had to shovel the snow away from the garage or to even get down to the valley. So my friends and my family said, so "Why don't you move back?" To Sonthofen and we can visit you more often look at you and look at after Eddie and well so I did that I ended up in Sonthofen in the center in the so-called pedestrian zone where you can drive only those who live there have a garage there and can drive their car there and uh, I was up in the second floor in a, in a loft kind of uh, apartment really cute with a sunroom where I could uh, look down in winter and sit and uh, I saw the coffee shop across the street where my friends met and I saw if they were there in the beer garden I can go there and drink a cup of coffee with them. And um, there was one problem. Uh, I had no daycare for Sarah who was a little younger than Eddie after school daycare because there were only a few spots available and they were all taken when we were moving. And I was on a waiting list, of course, so um, uh, I could not, uh, I could not um, find one. So, um, what I came up with, uh, downstairs in, in the house I lived was a Chinese restaurant, a very nice woman. And uh, I had an arrangement with her. I paid her five days, uh, five uh, Deutsche Mark, not Euros, but Deutsche Mark then, five Euros a day uh, for, for five days a week. 
25 Deutschmark and uh, Eddie could come after school Sarah. like in a buffet style as uh, Eddie. Sarah could come in, a, in after school. Okay, you guys go outside if you don't stop barking here, okay? That's my dogs I'm talking to. <laughs> so she could come and eat after school, do her homework there. They watched her until I was home from work around four o'clock and um, that was cool. And then uh, across the street I had a Greek restaurant, uh, the Poseidon, and when we ate there a lot. And when they learned from that arrangement, they said, we, we do the same if she wants to switch, you know, one week Greek, one week Chinese, we offer you the same arrangement. And so I did that too. And one of the, the favorite dishes from Sarah was moussaka. And they, call, they, they pronounce it moussaka, not moussaka. That's the first you have to learn. So, uh, and uh, the other thing is, um, I, if you look, if you Google moussaka on the, on, the, on the internet, you find all these recipes with mashed potatoes on top. And that's not how Greeks make moussaka. <laughs> it's how the Xenos make it. <laughs> I like that. Um, uh, my big fat Greek wedding movie, both parts. I, I watch it over and over again because it's really like they are. And my friends in Sandhofen who had that restaurant, um, they were the same. A big family, big heart, and uh, they considered us family because uh, my daughter came there eating and doing the, her homework. So basically, my daughter got co raised by a Chinese and a Greek restaurant. <laughs> So this is the story behind it. Now we are cooking, okay? So for the moussaka, we need a, I, I take that um, form here, the, uh, a, a, a glass form. Don't take a, as we don't use oil, don't take a, um, a sticky form. This one won't stick. Uh, instead of oil, I use a avocado. You want to you wanna, uh, fatten the form up like this, you want to do that. So instead of oil, we fatten it with avocado. We don't use butter or oil. Also the, the, the rinse. If you need more, there is uh, half an avocado left, okay? Okay. All right, so we have that. Then uh, for the tomato sauce, uh, moussaka is made with lamb originally. So um, it's a very deep Mediterranean flavor. So I try to, when I, when I veganized it, I try to recreate the spices, the spices and uh, ingredients, this uh, Mediterranean flavor without using lamb, of course and the texture. So what we do first, we heat the, our skillet. We put a little bit of water in it. Not much. Just so that the surface is covered. Okay. Let that heat. Put a little bit of, I have that dry ingredient. It's a Seitenbacher vegetable broth. But you can take uh, anything, any vegetable, vegan vegetable broth you want. I put a, a, a quarter teaspoon in it. There's a little flavor ingredient. All right, looks good, Eddie. You can throw the peel away. All right. There's still avocado in it. Uh. That's, that's good enough. No, That's okay. Avocado is, is a good ingredient. So just throw it out. You smash that. Smash that and, and spread it out a little. No, you can throw it away. Okay, so we have that little water. In here I have three scallions chopped. I have um, half a cup three scallions chopped, half a cup uh, mushrooms. And you, again, you can take white mushrooms, you can take cremini, any mushrooms you want, and half a cup of, of chopped walnuts. 
This is my texture ingredient. Walnuts have also a very earthy flavor and they have not, a, not that mu as much oil like other nuts and they're very heart healthy. So I took half a cup and we put that in and let that water saute. We have to make sure we have enough water here. Oops. Oopa. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I have I found this, I think it was, uh, where did I find it? Probably Whole Foods or Nopil, Earth Pound, Cauliflower Medley, Riced Veggies. If you don't have that, just take a uh, rice cauliflower. It's just a uh, uh, um, carrots in it, cauliflower. Broccoli and onions, and that's all the rice. So I thought, oh yeah, that saves me some time. I don't have to chop everything. Oh yeah, and uh, four cloves of garlic chopped is in here too, because um, garlic is a major ingredient in the Greek cuisine. But um, what I noticed is, um, don't overdo it with one flavor. So you have to have the right mixture. To make it a good moussaka, it has to be with garlic, but not too much garlic. It has to be with uh, um, oregano, but not in too much oregano. It has to be with thyme, but not too much thyme. So you don't want to overpower any of the ingredients, but you want to create that Mediterranean flavor. And I'll show you how we do it. Get more water in that it can saute a little bit more. This is kind of ground meat texture, you know. If it would have lamb, it would be ground lamb or little lamb pieces. Okay. some preparations and you have to do that too. I have um, two zucchini sliced and light and baked at 425 for about 10 minutes. I have um, a big eggplant sliced. So the slices are like this thick, see this? Not too thick, not too thin and I bake them in the oven as well. It's not hot anymore. I, I had left over this is actually <laughs> I had left over potatoes which we need and I sliced boiled potatoes and baked them as well for about 10 minutes so I had the whole thing together in the oven put them here in the meantime uh, so that we have it ready to go here, huh? How about that? Ah, that woman from Vallejo, by the way, who owns that clothes shop in London, she loves it there. Yeah, she, she gave me a lot of uh, information on it. Okay, we don't need the small one because we took the big one. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's getting just right. Okay, next ingredient for that. <coughs> you can either take fat-free pizza sauce or I have the Trader Joe's with mushrooms, fat-free, which I usually use for my spaghetti. Put that in. Nice, so we have the tomato flavor in there our so-called meat sauce, fake meat sauce, <laughs> that's how I call it. Put that on half, it's not splattering too much. Put that on. All right, just 
taking out the sauce with a little bit of water. <clears throat> if you wanna, if you wanna uh, stir a little, just slowly, just that it doesn't, you know, I have it on half that it doesn't get too boily. We get have to get it hot. All right. Um, then we need for this one. We need. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I did here. This is uh, California red wine. Um, we need about half a cup for the sauce. The red wine goes very good with lamb. When I noticed uh, the flavor, I mean the alcohol cooks away. If you don't want to use red wine because you have issues with alcohol, use um, red uh, balsamic vinegar. That works too. But we use this half a cup and put it in. And this is the unruly red from Manteca Winery. It's not. A high quality wine it's a good wine it has a taste of berries and the rest of the wine is for the chef <laughs> mm, very good very good room temperature just fine very good bouquet it's not a Pinot Noir but it's a it's a, it's a cool wine I, I think so this was that then we need uh, Sliced black olives, put those in, oops. And we put in half a cup of chickpeas or cannellini chickpeas, uh, garbanzo beans, garbanzo beans, half a cup. Don't forget that life We need the rest of this, uh, this was a non, this was a, a cup of uh, garbanzo beans. We need those, so don't throw that away or put that away too far. We need that later in the bechamel. Okay. Um, we need some pepper. And we need some salt. We do not take a lot of salt because as I, I always do the salt later. You know when we are done, just for now, maybe three pinches of salt. Okay, then as the spices, I have that genius spice here, it's called Herbs de Provence. You might not have that, it's a mixture. It's, it's marjoram, it's thyme. Um, rosemary and uh, sage so this for me if you smell it this is like the perfect mediterranean mixture herbs de provence if you don't have it you might have italian herbs mixture that works too or you just mix it together um, i like the marjoram in it. it the italian herbs will have oregano in it but no marjoram so you might want to add marjoram marjoram in red wine and uh, gives that flavor I, I'm going for for the moussaka. moussaka so half a teaspoon of the herbs de Provence then we need a quarter teaspoon cumin teaspoon cinnamon in it. Cinnamon is an ingredient of the Greek kitchen for meat. Um, you know the meat we call London broil. They, I saw them rubbing it with cinnamon and turmeric and cumin in it. It gets really good. So this is an ingredient, a true ingredient. How we're we doing? Let's see. Got Got the cumin. Got the herb de Provence, the ground cinnamon. This is for our bechamel sauce. Need 
Okay, I think. We're almost there. Is it boiling? Yeah, it's boiling. Good, because we have to get the alcohol out, so. A la hole. Yeah, it looks good. Our, let it all come together a little bit. And this will be our meat sauce. Try it. can do a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. Yeah, put a little bit more pepper in. We have in a little bit more red wine. A little bit. It's like um, more a cup, I think, right? Half a cup. To look for it. I wrote it down. I want that um, meaty, hearty flavor in it. I know from the moussaka. Okay, um, let's put it on small, okay, then we need um, the pepper on the, we put a little pepper on the zucchini, on the roasted zucchini, put a little pepper, maybe we can put that here, huh, alright, a little pepper on the roasted eggplant, salt on it. If you are saltless, just leave it out. I put a little bit on. Oh, oh I forgot no, I forgot the basil. Oh yeah. Sorry people. So a pinch of ba dry basil. If, if you don't have it doesn't matter. Uh, the other thing we need is oregano, but there was, uh, here it is, I have organic oregano. We take a quarter, because the, the Provence have marjoram in it, which is necessary, but I want a little bit oregano too. Oregano and marjoram are in the same family, it's different taste, but in the same family, so I want both in it incorporated. Okay, now, can I go here? We get the potatoes out first. So we have roasted potatoes here, and this goes in our skillet first. And uh, all the recipes I saw on, online, they used mashed potatoes and that for me that's a shepherd pie that's not a moussaka so we, do, we don't do this we want it all lined up we need some potatoes later but uh, Want it all lined up in there like this. <clears throat> some other stuff here. I have more potatoes, we need some on top too, but uh, this comes later. So now, what we do. Put a little bit of that, kind of like you do a lasagna, um, but just a 
just a little bit of that meat sauce in there. Just sprinkle it a little. We don't want to make it too soggy, so it's just enough that it is a little of the flavor in it. Then we put the eggplants on top. Oops. They're nice and dry. I baked them. for decoration on top what do you think okay um then a little bit nutritional yeast sprinkle that We had spaghetti yesterday. Mm -hmm. My husband made spaghetti, and half of the spaghetti are always on the oven when he makes spaghetti. Well, there were pink spots on it. Top. and all the, the vegetables uh, salted and peppered The nutritional yeast is optional, of course. I put it in. I think it's good in there, like a parmesan. I do put a little um, vegan cheese on top. You don't have to. You can only do nutritional yeast and, and breadcrumbs, but uh, I think it gives it a good flavor. Just be, make sure you don't have uh, vegan cheese with casein in it, the major carcinogen in milk and cheese. You don't want to eat that. Okay. Spread it out nicely. Oh, before I forget it. Gotta heat the 425. The oven to 425. get old you know that's when you forget to turn off the ovens that's why I have Eddie Eddie watches me <laughs> so the top layer of potatoes it doesn't matter so much if they are roasted uh, the bottom should be roasted because it soaks it's not so soggy then and we have uh, potatoes here I keep 
one for the bechamel sauce, one goes in the bechamel. The others need to be peeled and here. Just keep um, covering your moussaka with uh, slices, not too thin, of russet potatoes. Make sure you have enough. So I had a whole pot. And cold potatoes who get reheated, you know that is good. It's not. Um, uh, it's good for your diabetes. Your glucose reading will not go up. Um, I found that out recently. Same as rice, if you if it's cold first and then you heat it up again, it's better for you for diabetics. I um, my diabetes is in remission completely. I told you that. Oh, should I tell you weight loss when I came back from Wyoming and Utah and. Also, I ate fantastic over there. My current weight loss, 89 pounds. Woohoo! 89 pounds. I don't think you can see it, huh? Yeah. So I'm really happy. And my, as I said, my diabetes is in remission. That's why it's now and then I can allow myself some something I wouldn't have eaten in the beginning, like a stay away from nuts and seeds. Just leave them out in the recipe if you are still on a heavy weight loss program, strict weight loss program. Um, avocados, the same. perfect yeah I want to really have it covered with everybody should get the good potato flavor on it yeah that's what makes it so good okay all right so we put that one here on the side so now we go to select the last and final step of our moussaka we are almost there Bechamel sauce and the pot. We still have our egg plant. Hmm? Our egg plant. That goes on top for the for the we cut it and put it on top for um, decoration. Okay. okay. So bechamel sauce. First um, First challenge was to, to start the bechamel sauce. As you know, a bechamel sauce usually starts with butter melted and then you whisk in flavor. So I found a good way to do it different. Half a cup, half a cup water in the, <laughs> half a cup water. You put it on high, let it coming to a boil 
again we put um, a quarter, I mean, a quarter teaspoon of that bouillon stuff in there. And again, you can put any vegan bouillon stuff in there if you want. No problem. With that. A whisk. Hmm. Okay, see that coming up to a boil. Now we need brown rice flour. You can take basically any flour, I think. I think. Try it out. I use the rice flour because it's not making these lumps. Rice flour is a really good uh, not making lumps. So we need half a cup of rice flour put it in and twist and this is the big thing, the key thing you have to whisk 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 okay? don't uh, let it come to lumps put the water in it uh, no milk uh, get the uh, you have to make a roux basically see so this is how it looks don't let it burn, but it is okay when it goes like this. So we need soy milk. I use a cup or more, we have to see. You start with a cup and shake the soy milk. I always forget it. Okay, you use a cup and put it in. And then we let it come up. We will lumps will disappear. Like in a normal bechamel sauce, the lumps will disappear. So it's soaked up by the milk. You want it thick, you don't want it thin. <clears throat> you want to you wanna stir? I put it on low. Just stir. When it starts getting thick, let me know. Okay? Oh, but you have to stir that the lumps are going away. Okay? Let me know when it starts getting thick. So, what do we do in our Vitamix or Nutribullet? I use the huge Nutribullet. We put in another cup of soy milk. Soy milk, we put the rest of the chickpeas, carbonzo beans. We put pepper. Cayenne pepper, and we need a quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper in there. So don't don't be stingy with the cayenne pepper. You want it nice. And, uh, salt. Let's do. Hmm. Let's do a quarter. Not a single lump in there. Keep, keep stirring. And um, the major ingredient. Put a little one teaspoon um, onion powder in it. The major is nutmeg. Okay. 
It's kind of like biscuits and gravy thickness of the sauce. Perfect. And I need to find nutmeg. It's one of the major ingredients in the special now. There it is. But you didn't put it out. Come on, Sylvia. Okay. Nutmeg. I put Water. I think I put two quarter nutmeg in because nutmeg needs to you need to be able to to notice the nutmeg. Okay. Oh and one potato. I did leave one potato here, yeah. So we peel that really quick. The potato gives it additional thickness in the sauce. We want to see because we don't use butter or oil. Um, we need to make the sauce nice and creamy. And one of the ways we do it, we put a tomato, um, a potato in here. We put a tomato, tomato, potato, tomato, potato. <laughs> All right. Here's my nutri bullet. You know that one already. of the sauce which we put in here and then we have a super duper thick moussaka bechamel like the Greek wants it with all the calories <laughs> look at this the bechamel perfect but you don't want it soggy and, and thin you, know? you don't want it runny and now let me taste it where's my spoon to take my tasting spoon there. more salt more salt, more salt. I'm sorry for the people who live saltless. I need more salt and pepper. And maybe a little bit more cayenne. Nutmeg is enough. Nutmeg is enough. I need salt. Is there salt right here? Okay, okay. Put a little bit salt in it. I will adjust, I will give you the recipe underneath the video in the info section and then we'll adjust for it so you don't have to worry. I can taste the cayenne. That's cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now it's good. Okay. Now what we do. Yeah, all the bechamel goes on top of here. And they're all covered with bechamel. All the potatoes need to be covered. Yeah, it's hot because um, you know you eat it with the potatoes, and then that is not so hot. That's just the topping of the.
And lots of people make that with mashed potatoes, but for me that is a shepherd's pie, that's not a moussaka. I know the moussaka with sliced potatoes, roasted, which gives it a unique, uh, a unique taste. That's how we make it. Okay, now, next step, you put some um, breadcrumbs on it. I have some uh, whole wheat breadcrumbs, bought, store bought from Whole Foods. Don't put too much, just a little. And now you can do, actually we can do it. A little bit of traditional yeast. This is not in the Greek recipe, but I put it on. And I myself, and I'm not a big uh, vegan cheese eater, but um, I put one of the shredded vegan, vegan cheeses I have on, which, which has, does not have casein. Just make sure in the ingredients it doesn't list casein in the vegan cheese. Because, um, then you might as well eat normal cheese because that's the carcinogen you want to avoid in which is in cheese in dairy cheese so we eat dairy free this is plant cheese okay. so we put that on top give it a little cheesy flavor Not too much because we don't want to eat too much fat. Okay, done. Done. We put that in the oven for 20 minutes and then we come back and show you our moussaka. Okay, bye. Hello, we're back and look at our, our uh, moussaka. I had it in there 25 minutes at 425 look how nice uh and scorched it is you you, want, you don't want to take it out before it has these little brown edges that makes it really good now we decorate it remember the little leftover um, eggplant you put it over i don't put it in before i have it in the oven because i don't want it to look wielded and unappetizing so we put some fresh tomato on top so you can serve it family style. You should let it um, sit. Ooh, I forgot to show you the inside. Mmm, that's a Greek moussaka, not a xeno moussaka. <laughs> Bye and greetings to my Greek family, the restaurant owners in Sandhofen, restaurant Poseidon. Okay, so we put all the tomatoes, fresh tomatoes and chives I have on it. To make it look nice don't do it before you uh, put it in the oven then it the fresh stuff looks really nice on the on your moussaka let's show it again on smell of vision look at this greek moussaka original greek recipe and i hope the tater cowgirls can entice you to watch us again next week i have a little bit of my red wine left and uh go in front of me so you say good next tater the next rodeo is next sunday and uh we like to give you a greek uh, recipe this time and uh but goodbye and opa <laughs>